Let lift our hands to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for this great church. Thank you for the great leadership here. Thank you for the anointing that's on this house. Thank you for the anointing on me in these slips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking you to think through my mind, speak to my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. We thank you for it. We call it done in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. While you're still standing, give the pastor and the first lady a hand clap for what God is doing through them in the name of Jesus. Woo! Take your seats. I heard one person right back here, and it was a lady. I heard her right back here, somewhere. Did I hear somebody right back here? Flo, Flo, did I hear? Come here. Here's $100 in the name of Jesus, U.S. currency. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's get right into the Word of God. I want to go right through it today um, for some reasons we've got to uh, get out in the airplane, but um, I want to go through it. I'm going to give you what you're supposed to get tonight. Uh, all right, now, last night we talked about uh, the blessing. We started entering into the blessing. What is the blessing? <clears throat> um, but we started, let's say, let's start at Genesis chapter 1. And verse 26, and it says, <clears throat> and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So dominion, the sovereign of supreme rule and authority, dominion, a sovereign and supreme rule and authority, dominion, <clears throat> the power to govern and to control. The power to govern and to control. Dominion. The power to direct and dispose of at your pleasure. The power to direct or dispose of at your pleasure. Let them have dominion. What do we mean when we say the blessing? In Genesis 1:28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fishes, over the fish, whatever of you. So when we're talking about the blessing, we're talking about the name that God gave to the power that he used to create the world. The name that God gave to the power that he used to create the world. So he gives this power to mankind. And he blessed them and said unto them, this is the first words that Adam heard. He spoke it into the spirit. The Bible talks about in Genesis 1, uh, chapter 2 and verse 7, it talks about that God made man, molded man, out of the dust of the earth, and breathe into his nostril the breath of life, and mankind became a living soul. And when we say living soul, another translation says, a speaking spirit like God. So mankind became a speaking spirit like God. Now what we don't know is that we are to function pretty much just like God. Over in the book of Ephesians, Paul brings it out by revelation. Over in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. All right, so in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be ye followers of God as your children. Let's look at it in the Amplified Translation, AMPC. 
Be ye imitators of God. Copy him and follow his, follow his example. As well beloved children, imitate their father. So many things that you're going to be doing are going to be on another level. We call it 4D. All right? So we're, we're moving on up to a whole nother level. Uh, I came here to announce to you that you're moving to another level. Praise God. All right, so um, this imitating God, look what it says in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and say uh, to, let's go, and that I may plant the heavens. Thou art my people. So notice, I'm going to get the words of God in my mouth and plant the heavens. And what do I mean by plant the heavens? It's already done in heaven. Everything is already done. God doesn't start till he's finished. He finished everything. And then he created a man. No, when this man is created, he's created to take what was in heaven and to speak it into the earth. So he's a co-laborer with God. He's this co-creator. Everything is created twice. He's a co-creator with God. So the things that are to be done in the earth, God put people in the earth to do it. And Adam had it. He had that responsibility. As you know, in Genesis chapter 3, what happened is Satan came, tempted Eve. She ate of the tree, gave it to Adam. He ate of it. Now, once they did, the curse came. So they lost everything. And what I did is I showed you over there, uh, over in uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17 and 18, that <clears throat> this curse brought the condition where everything had turned against him. So now the, the animals turned against him. The ground hated him. Now man is in a fix. As a matter of fact, he had lost his mind because what he did is he covered himself with fig leaves. He and Eve. Suppose I came up here to preach tonight in a fig leaf suit. <laughs> you would wonder what is wrong with me. He lost his mind. He lost the mind of Christ. He lost the godly mind. And now he's down in 3D, locked there. And in 3D is where your limits are time, space, and matter. In other words, you have to wait on something to grow. Not in 4D. In 4D, you can see in Numbers chapter 17 and verse 8, where Moses is now, has got to pick a leader. And so they were arguing about who was going to be the leader. So he got the rod from all 12, including Aaron. And he put the rods in the tabernacle of witness overnight. And then once he came back the next morning, Aaron's rod had not only branches on it, it had not only leaves on it, it had not only buds on it, it had fruit on it. So in 4D, you can get fruit overnight. So you don't have to wait on the, the system of the world, the economy to change and all of that. You're no longer in that system. You're in the upper system. Satan's job is to not let you operate there. His job is to keep you in a system called Babylon. His job is to keep you in a place where your limitations are time, space, and matter. You have to wait on something to get healed. You have to wait on whatever it is. So now you're in another system. So God's got you in a system where you're going to be able to not only see things that the world cannot see, but do things that the world cannot do. So you now are going to act like God. How does God act? One, God is a blesser. Uh, next, God does the impossible. God does the impossible. If something uh, can be done, then your own experience, your own knowledge, or, or your own skill can do it. If something cannot be done, 
then faith can do it. So you are people of faith. You're supposed to be doing things that a natural person cannot do. Say amen to that. All right, so as we look at this condition of man, man is in in a bad way now, but God is prophesying that he's getting the blessing back into mankind. And so what I showed you last night was this man Limick, and he had a son named Noah. And he prophesied that Noah will bring comfort to the people. And when we say comfort here, again, that's over in also in the book of Isaiah and, and several places. But we're comforting now because the blessing is coming back. Now this blessing coming back on mankind first appeared on Noah, and we showed you in Noah chat, uh, Noah in Genesis chapter nine and verse one and two, when Noah and his sons were blessed. Now he had three sons, uh, uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and they went to three different parts of the earth. Now what happened, the thought is that two of them somehow lost the blessing, but one of them, Shem, kept the blessing. Now, the way that if you can track that blessing on down, you'll see that this blessing now came to Abraham. Now, this, now you understand that Noah had to have the blessing because God had the earth flooded. Why? Because he had to do something with humanity. Why? Because humanity has gotten so evil. And it said over in Genesis chapter 6, 5, the thoughts and the imagination of man was only evil continuously. How would you want to go to a city and it was only evil? As a matter of fact, you could see that with Sodom and Gomorrah. You could see in Genesis chapter 19, starting at verse 4, you could see where some angels came because of the intercession of Noah to get his nephew Lot out of that place, Lot and his family. Well, notice what happened. He went in there, but all the people of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah were perverted. And what they had, young and old, it said, they closed in and wanted to have sex with the men that came in, just perversion. And so what am I saying? Notice how the enemy had flipped their thinking. Notice how now they were thinking thoughts that were not God at all, to the point that God had to destroy the whole city. Now my point to you is, is that we must realize that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Now when I say that, I mean over in Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar rose up, very, very important, very powerful in that day, and but here is Nebuchadnezzar, and now he's out to do some things, perhaps that were against God, and Daniel warned him, said Nebuchadnezzar, uh, that's something going to happen. And Nebuchadnezzar, I guess God gave him a dream to warn him, warn him about this tree that was cut down. So what happened is Daniel told him, said, hey, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, God is going to take away your throne. He's going to take away your mind. And he says, you're going to be out and you're going to eat grass like an ox. And after seven years, you're going to be restored again. Now, this is God. This is the power of the God we're hooked up with. This is the power of the God that can actually affect somebody's mind who's very powerful. So don't ever think that God can't turn a situation around. I'm not talking about just in your family. I'm talking about in your city. God can turn some things around. Why? This is the power of the blessing and the things that he gave us. Are you with me so far? Say amen to this. All right, so here's this blessing coming back. And now this blessing is passed to Abraham. Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, and look at verse two and three. And God blessed Abraham and said uh, to Abraham, well, let's read it. Put it up there on the board. Verse two, ready, read. Keep going. All right, unto thee shall all what? Now, here's God. He's going to bless families and he's going to bless nations. Why? Because in the beginning, the blessing was supposed to be for everybody. 
It's supposed to be for the whole line of Adam, but Adam cut it off. And so now the blessing is being restored. And now God is telling Abraham, I'm going to bless you, but understand that you're going to be a blessing. I'm not just blessing you and your family, Abraham, but I want you to go to the nations of the earth and make sure everybody gets the blessing back again. Say amen to that. All right, say I'm blessed. Look at Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. How? Through faith. Say, through faith. Through faith. So it said in verse 29, if you belong to Christ, and you do belong to Christ, if you, if you belong to Christ, say amen. amen. Then are you Abraham's seed and as according to the promise. Now, I want to show you the promise. Look here at Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. I want him to put that up there, and I want you to read that with me in your best voice. Ready? Read. All right. Promise that he should be the heir of the what? World. Heir of the what? World. Heir of the what? Well, so Abraham was to inherit the world, but it's not just to Abraham, but Abraham and his seed. Say, I'm the seed of Abraham. Now, I'm telling you that one of the reasons you're in the earth is to take it all back. Hallelujah. The devil has taken it and put it in the wrong hands, and now here comes the church. Ha ha on the devil. We're here to take back everything that the devil stole. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's look at this. So now what God's going to do is he's going to send us places. Now, I want you to read a scripture with me and look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and verse 7. I want you to see that. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. Uh, let me see. Is there somebody here want to make some money? Uh, come on up here and read for me right quick. Okay. All right. Okay. Nobody here? Okay. Anybody over here want to make? Okay. Uh, okay, all right. You come on, come on up. Okay, all right, all right. No, nobody over here said anything. I have, I have never seen that in any church in my life. <laughs> you know, I got plenty of money. All right, he's gonna get a microphone. All right, look, look what it says here. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter twenty-nine, and a verse. Uh, do I have somebody? No. Uh, 29, 17. All right, I can't wait because I, 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 okay, I got things to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stand over here on my right hand. Okay. All right. Ready? Read. And seek thee the peace of the city where I have caused you. Okay, read it. To be carried away, captive, and bring to the Lord for it. For in peace you will have peace. Okay, okay. All right, I'm sending you to a city. Now, I'm not sending you there to curse the people. I'm sending you there to bring peace. I'm sending you there to bless the city. Now, I want you to get this. This is very key because in the Old Testament, Jesus taught them, it says, to, to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He said, but I'm telling you something new. I want you to love your enemy. Now, this, this that kind of startled them. He said, why? This is all in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 44, 45. He said, because I want you to be like your father. Now, here's the way the father is. God so loved the world. So God doesn't hate them. He loves them, and he wants them to be saved. And he's sending you in there to speak peace. He's sending you in there to help build up the city. See, because they're already cursed, but now God wants them blessed. I'll try it again. They've already been cursed. God wants them blessed. And you are the blesser. You have the blessing in you and on you. Watch this. And can speak peace to the city. I said speak peace 
to the city. So what happens? One day I'm preaching, and then I came down on the steps of our pulpit, and I said this. We are turning, in the name of Jesus, we're turning jails into boarding schools. Now I said that by the leading of the Lord. It's word in my mouth, and I spoke it out just like God did when he created the universe, and things started happening. He said in Job chapter 22, 28, thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established. So notice what I did, I spoke it. All of a sudden, things start happening. Look, it started happening where they wanted to have us in to teach Bible and teach leadership in Cook County Jail. And then it went to another level. People were going to putting my video and put my services in there in Cook County Jail. Then it went to another level. We were saving and baptizing people in Cook County Jail. Then it went to another level. Here we are, and I am speaking at a graduation that we're holding in Cook County Jail. And we asked the officials, can we take off their jail uniforms and put on three-piece suits? So we put on three-piece suits, and here they are, the ones that are going to get released from jail pretty soon, and they got our teachings, and they're experiencing graduation, and I'm the graduation speaker. And so now, here they are experiencing graduation, but on one side are the inmates that are about to be released with three-piece suits, and on the other side are the uh, people from the various businesses that are gonna hire them when they get out. Notice, it all came from word, one word. I said, we're turning jails into boarding schools. And so Jesus teaches in Mark 11, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass, he shall what? Have whatsoever he said. I put my words in your mouth that I may plant the heavens. So he's planting heaven's solutions. He's turning a jail into a boarding school. Now what's happening? They have just put a full four-year high school in jail. Now what is happening? The trading people downtown Chicago that trade all kinds of products, services, whatever have you, they said, can we put a trading floor in Cook County Jail? We want to teach the inmates how to trade stock. Now, here's what I'm telling you. That is no coincidence. He's not sending you there to curse. He's sending you there to bless. What am I saying to you? What are you doing with your mouth? You're transferring heaven to earth. It's already done in heaven. He needs your mouth. And he needs you to believe what you say shall come to pass. Say amen to that. So I'm saying what I did with our members. I said, I want you to do this. Take your wallet or your, uh, take your bills and the things you owe and put them on the kitchen table and step back off of them and say this, Bills, I'm talking to you. I better come over this side. The Bible says in Isaiah 8.18, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and wonders. You're not to do things naturally. That's not in your DNA. 
Your DNA is God and you are supposed to act like him. And God speaks things into existence. I decree from this day forward, you will speak the thing and they will obey you in the name of Jesus. Sit down. A king gets things done by decree. By decree. Luke chapter 2, Caesar Augustus decreed that all the nations would be taxed. Notice, he didn't leave his throne. It was done for him. The Bible says for you over in Hebrews chapter 1, 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them that shall be heirs of salvation? Angels are with you now. Watch this. Waiting on something to do. As long as you think you're a slave, you won't speak. But if you know that you're joining, glory to God. Woo-hoo-hoo. We got the devil where we want him now. If you know you're joining, you will start speaking to things. Did Jesus speak to a fig tree? Yes or no? Did the tree obey him? Did Jesus speak to a storm? Did the storm obey him? Did Jesus said the things that I do, you shall do too. Sit down. You see what I'm saying? Now, what are we saying? Well, I need another sermon. You don't need another sermon. You need to act on what you learned six years ago. You don't need another sermon. I'm just coming to town as a refresher. Matter of fact, this is a 4D workshop. Holy God. I told him, I said, you put them bills on the table. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because Christ has redeemed us. And that's part of your redemption. You are no longer the borrower. You are the lender. Bills, and and this is what I'm saying now. Bills, I'm talking to you. Now you got to watch out for bills. Bills are trying to talk back. Shut up. That's what you tell them. In the name of Jesus, I command you, be paid off. Watch this. Disappear. Dematerialize in the name of Jesus. Now why? You're covering all the waterfronts. See, God may not want to pay them off, you know, one at a time. He may just want to make them disappear. Come back over here, my God. So what am I saying? Sit down. I'm saying from this day forward, you're going to act like God. In Jesus' name. This is powerful. But this is, this is what the New Testament is about. It's about this right here. What you need to do is believe the book rather than to believe that news media. They don't know what they're talking about. Are you following what I'm saying? Now you, you think about it. If you are aware and conscious of your spiritual authority, you can do things. How about the man in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16, Here is the prophet telling Israel which way the Syrian army is going to attack. And they told the king, king, we got a traitor somewhere. And one man said, you don't have a traitor. There's a prophet down there. And he's telling everything you say in your bedchamber. He knows God is telling him. So what happened? The king said, send an army, go get them. And they sent an army by night, say by night. (laughs) 
See, you cannot, you cannot sneak up on the people of God. God will always warn you when the enemy is coming. Lord have mercy. So what happened? The enemy surrounded the city of Dothan and there now they got him fenced in. They, they know where the prophet is. They got him covered. He cannot get out. The prophet's servant, Gehazi, uh, who turned out to be full of unbelief, he came out and saw all the Syrian army. He said, Lord, what are we going to do now? He said, there be more with us than be with them. Come on now. I said, as many angels as you need to get out of the trouble that you're in, God will supply them. God has made it so and deprived Satan of his right, his ability to hurt you, destroy you, or make you fail. I'll try it again. God has taken away and deprived Satan of his right and ability to hurt you, destroy you, and make you fail. That's found in uh, John chapter 16, 33. That's a translation. All right. Can I keep going? Yes, so now we're pointing at bills. So Jesus spoke to a tree. And he came back the next day. And what had happened to the tree? It had dried up from the what? From the roots. Now the roots are underground. They're unseen. Am I right about it? So when God fixes your problem, he fixes it in the spirit. And when the spirit has been fixed, the natural will dry up and go away. So you can't be moved by what you see, but moved by what you say. So from now on, you're going to fix problems first with your thinking and with your mouth. Are you with me here? I'm saying this is going to start a new chapter in your life. This is a new year, and this year is going to be like none other year that you've ever experienced in the name of Jesus. All right. So, now you and I have a covenant obligation to take back everything that was lost. Now notice what he said. He said over in uh, Luke, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, he wants you to seek and to save that which is lost. Notice in Psalm, Psalm chapter 2 and verse 8, he says that he uh, ask of him, he'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Notice what happened with Abraham. Abraham went that Lot and his whole family and everybody were taken. Abraham armed uh, uh, 318 of his own men and went after them and recovered everything. Notice 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. Notice how he said to David, I want you to pursue, thou shalt surely overtake, and I want you to recover all. So you're going to recover all. Say amen to that. Not only those physical things, but you're going to recover the ability that God gave to man before the fall came. Glory to God. So what did God give to man? Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Notice what he said. He said, now these signs are going to follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, this is Jesus talking. In my name, they shall what? They cast out devils. They shall do what? Speak. Speak with other tongues. Keep going. They shall what? And, and next they shall what? And, shall not hurt them. And, and what else? They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Did he say they might recover? No. What did he say? From this day forward, you're going to be able to lay hands on the sick in Jesus' name and they shall recover. In Jesus' name, sit down. Glory to God. All right, let me see where I am now. So let's look now at this faith in the blessing. Glory to God. I think that's where I am. Glory to God. 
of faith in the blessing. Uh, first. All right. Watch this. Genesis 27 and 31. All right. Genesis 27, 32, 33. I'm going to give you something to read. All right. All right. Now, this blessing was on Abraham, passed to Isaac. Is only one blessing. Say one blessing. One blessing. And when you write blessing, don't write it in a small capital B. Write it in a large capital B, okay? Every time you write it, because it's the blessing. All right. I was on Isaac, and he's passing it on to Jacob. But Jacob was a trickster. And Jacob got this blessing by trickery. Now, it was God's plan, but, and his mother told him to do it. But anyway, his father was looking to bless the firstborn. But Jacob tricked him as if he was the firstborn and came in for the blessing. All right, now I want you to read, starting at verse 30 of Genesis chapter 27 and verse 30. Now watch how he reads this. Go ahead. Now it happened... As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, uh -huh. that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Keep going. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game that your soul may be blessed. <laughs> and his father Isaac said to him, who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. All right. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. It says Isaac trembled. He trembled. Now, why did he tremble? Because he knew he couldn't take it back. I'm saying that the blessing that's on you cannot be taken back. Now, two things. One, that Jacob, Esau vowed that he was going to kill him in verse 41. Go over to verse 41 and let him read, let him read there. All right? Because Jacob stole Esau's blessing, Esau say, said, I'm going to wait till dad dies and I'm going to kill this boy. All right? Maybe we won't read that. I'll, okay, I'll just tell you. All right. And so what happened, notice, all this was because of words. 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 When I tell you at this meeting, you are blessed. Yeah. In Jesus' name. You, you, you can sit up there and say, well, I didn't feel anything. See, that's bad. You don't believe and have faith in that blessing. But from this night forward, you're going to have faith in the blessing that is on your life. Yeah. Glory to God. Sit down. Words. 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 He didn't touch him. He didn't, he didn't do anything. He didn't go and sound off, have a sub, whatever. He just told him, you're blessed. Amen. Now, what Esau said in verse uh, 41, that he's going to kill him. Well, that's the wrong time to say it. Because once the blessing comes on you, I said, once a blessing comes on you, Satan cannot, cannot hurt you, destroy you, or make you fail. I better come over here, man. If you know that blessing is on you, well, what happened to Job? Job messed up because of what he said. Look what God said about Job. As a matter of fact, God's conversation with the devil about Job. Look at Job chapter 1, verse 10. Now, in verse 3, Job was the richest man in the East. 
If he kept the blessing, he would be the richest man in the east and the west. If he kept the blessing, he would be the richest man in the east, the west, and the north. If he kept the, I'm telling you, that blessing will make you increase and increase and increase and increase until all the earth belongs to you. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, so now look what it says here in, uh, where am I? Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, so this blessing, let me give you five plus one things that the blessing will do. The blessing will give you protection. Let's look again at verse 10 of Job chapter one. It will give you protection. All right, she's going to put it up. I want you to read that. Job chapter, chapter, chapter pardon me, Job chapter 1 and verse 10. Job 1 and verse 10. It gives you protection. Ready? Job 1, 10, please. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions. Have you increased in the land? All right, now, now, wait, wait, now. I know you've made a hedge around about it. Yes. Now, over in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse uh, 8, let's see about this hedge that he made. Put it up there, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Ready? Read. He who digs a pit will fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall will be beaten by a serpent. All right, now put it up there in the King James. Don't switch on me, Doc. I know my scriptures. All right, now. All right, now. Now, the serpent will bite. Now, my point to you is, whoever breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite. So look what the serpent did to Eve. Because the hedge was down. And I'm saying, who can pull the hedge down in your life? Not nobody else. The only person who can pull it down in your life is you. Job said this in Job chapter 6 and verse 24. Very quickly, please. Job chapter 6. I'm going to let you read that one. Verse 24. I got to teach you about the blessing. 624. Ready? Read. Teach me and I will hold my tongue. Hold my what? Ho tongue. Keep going. And cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Please teach me and show me where I have erred. Obviously, Job spoke things against the blessing. And when he did, their heads fell. And when it fell, his children got killed. His business got wiped out. And everything turned against him. I'm telling you right now, when that blessing is on your life, you call things that be not as though they were. You don't bow down to how things look. You make things look the way you want them to look. Say amen to that in Jesus' name. Now what happened? This blessing. Now this blessing is on Job, and now Job is speaking the wrong thing and got cursed. Now you know in Job 42, he came out of it all. Thank God for that, you can recover. So things that have been stolen from you because you made mistakes, get ready for them to come back to the house. In Jesus' name. All right, next, you have first, protection. Next, you have proficiency. Say proficiency. Say it loud. Proficiency. Proficiency means that you know how to do things that other people don't know how to do. And you can do them better than other people can do them. And never went to school for them. This is no indictment against school. Yes, you can go to school, but God is going to add the super to your natural. No, bro, Shanda. There's some scriptures I want to read here. No, no, I'm going to read it. Glory to God. Go to Job and Job chapter 32, starting at verse 6. Now, I'm going to have everybody to read this. Job 2, and look at it in the message translation, please. Now, this is for you. Say, this is for me. This is for me. Look what it says in Job chapter 32, starting at verse 6. 
I'm going to have everyone to read. Pronounce the word the best you can and keep reading. Ready? Read. Keep going. Uh, the next verse. Ready? Re- yeah. Keep, keep, keep the verse. Just a minute. Send this, send this back in the back to whoever taking care of the stuff. I'm gonna help you. Uh, keep the verses rolling, please. Keep the ready. Read. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Wait a minute. All right, stop. Getting old does not guarantee good sense. So just because somebody's had experience makes no difference. Just because somebody's been in the field longer than you makes no difference. God is empowering you with a blessing. And that blessing that is on your life gives you proficiency that nobody else has. In Job and Joseph's life, he went down and was a slave taken down to Potiphar and he worked as a slave for Potiphar in Genesis 39. But look what happened. Potiphar had put Job, uh, uh, J- Joseph, pardon me, he put him in work on his ranch. And the next thing you know, Joseph rose to the top. And the next thing you know, Joseph was bringing in so much until Potiphar gave him rule over everything. Here's the key. Jake, Shanda, Joseph never, I'm rushing. Joseph never went to ranch management school. He got it the way Adam got it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. I'm going to have you read this. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19. Watch this one. Ready? Read. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them in unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Look at that. Where did Adam get the name from? He got him from God. What school did he go to? No school. My point here is I'm not talking about don't go to school, but you're supposed to be at the top of your class. Matter of fact, you're supposed to know more than all of your teachers. All right. Okay, let's, uh, let's just stay right there. I'm going to use you one more time, I think. All right. Okay, let's look at some things. First, it's three P's. Three P's. Write this down. First, preference. Preference. God's preference in your life is not to come down to a circumstance driven life, but for you to come up to a circumstance dominating life. God's preference. He said to them when the storm came and they woke Jesus up, he said, why are you so fearful? How is that you have no faith? He expected them to stop the storm. And I don't know what storm there is in your life, but speak to it. God is expecting you from this lesson forward to come up to the spoken word. Glory to God. The next one 
is God's plan. God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life is for you to produce by the superior method of the spirit by faith, whatever is needed in your life. In other words, products, systems, services, solutions are all going to be produced from this day forward supernaturally. That's his plan. His plan is not for us to stay immature. He said, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. You know he wasn't talking about laying his head because the Bible says when they went over in the ship, he was laying his head on a pillow. He was asleep. So he had a place to lay his head. The one scripture says where he said to them, come over to my house and see where I abode. So he had a place to lay his head. That's not the revelation. The revelation is that the head can't come back to the body because the body has not grown up. So you and I are growing up. Say amen to that. It's time for Jesus to come back in the name of Jesus. So what I'm saying is this, this whole idea of be fruitful. It means to produce by the superior method of the spirit, having solutions and supplies by faith. So I've got to produce this by faith. Listen, he's not coming down. You're coming up. Say amen to that. Yeah. Now, when you see this, something happens to you on the inside. I can see that. Now watch this. Last, yesterday, last night, I started with, how much time I got? I started with, woo, five minutes. Okay, I started with it. Okay, let's stop time right quick. Okay, so... I started with Peter's catch. I said, Peter had no catch, no fish, caught no fish. Jesus got in his boat. He preached the gospel. Next thing you know, Jesus told Peter, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a draught. Now, Peter was reluctant because they had fished the lake dry. They didn't have anything in there. So he had fished the lake dry. Now, watch this. Jesus is preaching 4D. He's not preaching about a supply that comes from the earth. That is limited inventory. He is preaching about a supply that is invisible in heaven waiting for you. Genesis chapter 22. Here is God telling Abraham, go up on the mountain. I want you to offer your son Isaac up to me. What does he do? He goes up on the mountain. He finds the mountain. Now he takes Isaac and ties Isaac down. And now he lifts up the sword to, to slay his son. And the angel stopped him, said, nope. Now I know that the covenant is cut, whatever he said. And it says that Abraham all, all of a sudden looked in the thicket and there was a ram caught in the bush. Question. When did the ram get there? One more time. When did the ram get there? Remember what he said in Ephesians? Your pastor read it last night. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Put it up there please. I want you to read it one more time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Watch what it says. Ready? Read. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heaven. He has blessed us with Christ. all what? All what? Spiritual all blessings. All spiritual, come on, you better say it. Bless us all with spiritual all what? Blessings. Spiritual blessings, where? In heaven and places. places in Folks, Christ. heaven is not far off. Heaven is dimensional. All you got to do is step out of this body. You step into heaven. Can't you see it? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm saying to you, the ram got there before the foundation of the earth. And when he acted in faith, the ram 
manifested. And I'm telling you right now, your money's going to manifest before this year is out because you're going to walk by faith, come on, and not by sight. Give the Lord a shout in praise. Take your seats. Are you with me? And you follow what I'm saying here. That God is no longer coming down. His preference is for you to do what? Come up. Come on, let's go up to 4D. You don't need evidence. Faith is your evidence. And I'm saying when you do that, you will take back everything that the devil has stolen. The devil's job is to keep you arguing with people, keeping you uh, 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 always uh, doing things that will pull you down in the flesh, but you're done with that. When a situation happens and you don't know what to do about it, first thing you do is laugh. <laughs> Woo, hey, hey, praise God. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. Glory to God. I said you'll never be broke another day in your life in Jesus' name. Three C's. I gotta close it down. Three C's. Take a seat. Three C's. One C is confess. Another C is to commit. And another C is to create. This is the way you train your human spirit. One, don't confess or sow anything you don't want or that is not true. I'm about to train my spirit because out of my spirit is unlimited power. Don't confess or sow. Don't say or sow anything you don't want or that is not true. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're broke. It says wealth and riches shall be in your house. Number two, commit to live only by what you say. Commit to, if you say you're going to be there at 830, 830. Why? Because your spirit is being trained. Because when it's time for you to curse those bills, they're going to follow your words. They're going to do exactly what you said. Say amen. Amen. Number three, create. Expect what you say to be carried out supernaturally. Expect what you say to be carried out supernaturally. Understand, not naturally. So there's nothing the devil can do to stop it. Money is the lowest form of power on earth. Spiritual words are the highest form of power. And you can speak them. God watches over his words and makes them good. Say amen to them. The last thing. Two scriptures. One is that in Proverbs chapter 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich. Watch this. And he adds no sorrow. The next scripture, Psalm chapter 73 and verse 12. Put that one up there because I want you to read it. Ready? Read. These, the ungodly that prosper in the world, they increase in riches. Stop. These two. God is sending you on assignment. You don't need to be concerned about, well, God, I, that, if I go over and work over that place, they're paying minimum wage. Let, let, wait, 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 wait. Your increase is not coming from the world. It's coming from the blessing. God, God can have you work as a janitor and can have a jet. 
Uh, see, see, it's, it's here. It's that the enemy programmed our mind that we can't think, go up high. Next thing you know, he pulled them out of Egypt and they went in the wilderness and built a calf. Why did the calf come from? It came from Egypt. How did it get there? Through their thinking. I'm saying renew your mind. It's time for you to know that the power is not coming out of your head. It's coming out of your spirit. Say amen. amen. So from this day forward, you're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Watch this. Power is going to be coming out of you to the place that it will astound you. I'm going to give you this, this, the miracles that people will not believe. Watch this. Last scripture and I'm out. Matthew, I'm going to have you read it. Chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh, pardon me. Mark chapter 11 and verse 1. Mark chapter 11, verse 1. Ready? Read. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage Bethsaida. and Bethany, okay. uh -huh. at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied, whereon never a man sat. Now you're going to find a coat, a donkey, whatever, but never a man rode on this one. Keep going. Whereon never a... Okay. And if any man says unto you, why do, you, why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord had need of him. He said, what are you doing with my donkey? He said, tell him the Lord has need of it. Keep going. And straightway he will send his heater. Straightway he's, he's going to let him go. Next verse. And they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. And they lose him. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing? Losing the coat? And they spoke to them, just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. I know you read that, and you're reading it probably, some of you, in 4D, um, 3D. But read it in 4D. Where... Did the ram come from? It came from the invisible realm of heaven that was put there before the foundation of the world and that faith brought it into manifestation. Where did the fish come from? 4D. They were in heaven, the fish, the lake had been fished dry and now when they launched out under the command of the word of God, manifestation took place and they had so many fish, they had to call for their partners. When the woman was pouring the oil and she was put, filling up the jars and it kept filling them up and filling them up, where did the oil come from? 4D. It was in the invisible realm. It didn't come from the jar, it came through the jar. And I'm ask you, where did the man and the donkey come from? Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout. You're going to another level. Give him your best shout. Come on, come on. You're going to another level. My friend, you have done a great job. Here's a hundred dollars. God bless. Give him a hand clap. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, come on. We're going to give him a praise. Now, say this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am your son. I have the, the, the nature of God in me. I am a king. I am a Lord. And as I move in this earth, this year, things Will, will happen in my life that are supernatural. I'm going to another level. I'm not coming down. I'm going further up. Whatever's been stolen is coming back to me starting today. 
and this is the last day. Brokenness will be in my life. From now on, I'm going to act like you in the name of Jesus. So I rejoice and I give God praise in advance. Come on, rejoice in Jesus' name and give him praise. Amen.